What is up, guys? It is Bad Dog. So spring training has begun, and every day we are getting closer and closer to baseball season. Yeah, I always get very excited this time of year. I can't wait for Yankee baseball. They are my favorite team out of all the teams I root for. I just have a real passion uh, for baseball and the Yankees. I've had it since I was a kid. There's just something about the green grass, the outfield, the Cracker Jacks, the hot dogs, and just the crack of the bat that I just absolutely enjoy. Um, and I know a lot of people in, the, in uh, on YouTube, a lot of my subscribers know me for my football content, learning me for my basketball content. But I will be doing a lot of Yankee baseball. And I know there's a lot of people that don't follow the Yankees or don't follow baseball. So what I want to do today is kind of give you a little bit of the history of the New York Yankees. Uh, they are the most glorious uh, franchise in the history of baseball. 27-time World Series champion. That's more than uh, any other team in the history of professional sports has won. They have some of the most legendary players in the history of baseball, and it's just a phenomenal history of players. So what I want to do today is go over my top 10 list of all-time Yankees. And, um, you know, I'm going to start uh, right now. We'll go over the top 10, who I think are the top 10 greatest Yankees of all time. Number 10, I have Don Mattingly. Now, I may be a little biased here with Mattingly. I grew up in the 80s. He was the one shining light in a very dark tunnel of Yankee baseball. The Yankees were very bad when Don Mattingly was there, uh, the hitman. He uh, had a career average of 307. He had 222 homers and drove in 1,099 RBIs. Uh, he's widely considered, well, he was the best hitter in baseball from 1984 to 1988 until chronic back problems really uh, zapped him of his power and he had a lot of injury problems. He would have been in the Hall of Fame had he not had the, the chronic back problems. I mean, he was a fantastic hitter. A uh, six-time All-Star, an eight-time Gold Glove winner, Won the batting championship in 1984 with a, with a 343 average. Uh, he came back the next season and uh, won the MVP in 1985 by hitting 324 with 35 homers and driving in 145 runs. Um, just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal player. He was amazing. He really was. And again, it's too bad that he never won a World Series. He only made the playoffs one time in his Major League Baseball career. That was 1995. And he hit 421 uh, in that ALDS. And he hit one of the most legendary, iconic home runs in, in the old Yankee Stadium history, uh, Game 2 against Andy Bennis. I'll never forget. It gives me chills every time I see it. Gary Thorne's call is phenomenal. Um, Don Mattingly, though, I, I have him at number 10. Number nine, I have Bill Dickey. Uh, Bill Dickey, a lot of people don't know about him. He was a catcher in the 20s and 30s. Uh, he had a career average of 313. He hit 202 homers and drove in 1,208 uh, runs. Uh, this was a time when catchers did not put up offensive numbers. Bill Dickey is widely considered one of the greatest hitting catchers of all time. Uh, tied uh, for the record of highest single-season batting average by a catcher with Mike Piazza. He hit 362 one season. He was a 10-time All-Star, a 7-time uh, World Series champion. He also missed two seasons due to military service, so his numbers could have been even better. And he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1954. Number 8, I have the chairman of the board, Edward Whitey Ford. He had a career record of 236 and 106, which is a 690 winning percentage, one of the highest in the history of Major League Baseball. Career ERA of 2.75. Uh, he was an AL win leader three times in his career including 1961, in which he won the Cy Young by going 25-4. and four. He was a 10-time All-Star, a 6-time champion, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1974. Uh, he is widely considered the greatest pitcher, starting pitcher in the history of Yankee baseball, which is saying a lot. Number seven is probably going to cause a little controversy. That's where I had Derek Jeter. Bad dog, how can I have Derek Jeter so low? What's wrong with you? Because we have such amazing players on this franchise. But I have Derek Jeter at number seven. Uh, career 310 hitter, 260 homers, 1,311 RBIs. Uh, a 14-time All-Star, a five-time World Series champion, one Rookie of the Year in 1996, uh, 3,465 career hits, most ever by a New York Yankee. He will be inducted into the Hall of Fame as soon as he is eligible, and he hit one of the most iconic home runs in the history of Yankee baseball, uh, Game 4, 2001 World Series against the Diamondbacks when he was dubbed Mr. November. A very clutch player, the captain, one of the greatest Yankees in the history of their, of their team, uh, one of the greatest shortstops in the history of baseball. I have him at number seven just because there, there are just so many great Yankees on this list, but uh, a lot of people put him higher. I just happen to have him there. I love the Derek Jeter. Um, like I said, just a, just a very clutch guy, a gritty guy, and one of the most respected players ever in baseball. Uh, number six, I have Yogi Berra. Lawrence Peter Berra, Yogi Berra. A career 285 hitter, 358 homers, 1,430. RBIs, a three-time MVP in 1951, 54, and 55, an 18-time All-Star, a 10-time 
World Series champion, one of the greatest hitting catchers in the history of baseball. A lot of people put him second to bench as far as great hitting catchers go. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1972. Uh, just a phenomenal player, Yogi Berra was. And Yogi Berra didn't have a strike zone. Yogi Berra would swing a ball as it bounced. He would swing a ball over his head. And he would make contact and hit the ball hard wherever uh, he took a swing. So Yogi Berra, I have at number six. Uh, again, just w one of the greatest hitting catchers in the history of baseball. And, and probably the greatest hitting catcher in the history of of New York Yankee baseball. Number five, I have Mariano Rivera. Mariano Rivera, just absolutely ridiculous. The greatest closer in the history of baseball. Uh, he had 82 wins as a closer, a career 2.21 ERA, 652 saves, which is by far the most of all time. Now, here's where his numbers get absolutely ridiculous. He had a career 1.00 whip. That is walks and hits per inning. That is absolutely ridiculous how low that is. He was a 13-time All-Star, a 5-time World Series champion. And his career postseason numbers are absolutely mind-blowing. 8-1 in the postseason. A career 0.70 ERA, which is the lowest postseason ERA in the history of baseball. He only gave up 86 hits in 141 innings and had a .759 whip in the postseason. Nobody could touch the great Mariano Rivera. He threw one pitch. It was a cutter. Everybody knew it was coming, and nobody could hit it because of the pinpoint accuracy, the absolute late movement, just nasty. Everybody. That face Mariano Rivera will tell you nobody wanted to face Mariano Rivera. He was the toughest bat at bat anybody ever had. And that's the truth. He was absolutely phenomenal. Just fantastic. And as great of a pitcher as he was, an even better person. Uh, Mariano Rivera, one of the most respected players in the history of Major League Baseball. And a unanimous, the only player in the history of baseball to be unanimous, unanimously voted into the Hall of Fame. And that will be this season. He'll be inducted into Cooperstown. Number four, I have Jolton Joe DiMaggio. Uh, a career 325 hitter, 361 homers, 1,573 RBIs. He uh, had the record, holds a record, for a 56-game hitting streak in 1941. And the crazy thing about this is, after his hitting streak was broken, and no one will ever break that record, by the way, after he had this streak broken, he went on to hit in another 16 straight games after the 56-game hitting streak was snapped, which is crazy. A three-time MVP, 1939-1941, 1947. A uh, 13-time All-Star. Every single season of Joe DiMaggio's career, he was an All-Star. He was a nine-time World Series champion, and he missed three years in his prime due to military service. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1955, and one of the most staggering stats about Joe DiMaggio is he only struck out 369 times in his entire career, and he had 361 homers. Jolton Joe DiMaggio I have at number four. On the list. And he also married Marilyn Monroe. I mean, much respect to that pimp for doing that. Number three, I have Lou Gehrig. Now, Lou Gehrig is one of the greatest history, greatest hitters in the history of baseball. A career 340 hitter. 493 RBIs. 1,995 RBIs. That is the Yankee record. Um, he was a two-time MVP in 27 and 36. He won the batting title in 1934. He hit 363. He was a five-time RBI leader in 27, 28, 30, 31, and 34. He had 185 RBIs in 1931. He led the league three times in home runs in 1934, 31, and 36. A seven-time All-Star. He played in a record 2,130 straight games, which stayed until Cal Ripken broke it in 1995. He hit oh, better than 312 straight seasons, and he was a six-time World Series champion by hitting 361 as a postseason hitter. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1939, and he has one of the most legendary, iconic speeches in the history of baseball that included this Today, great line. I consider, I consider myself, myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face on the of the earth. Lou I have at number three on the list. Number two, Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle is widely considered one of the most talented Major League Baseball players in the history of the game. He had a career 298 average, hit 536 home runs as a switch hitter, which is the most all-time. He drove in 1,509 RBIs. A 20-time All-Star. He won the Triple Crown in 1956 by hitting 353 with 52 homers and 130 RBIs. He was a four-time home run leader, a three-time MVP in 56, 57, and 62, then a seven-time World Series champion. Now, he holds the record. As far as I know, he still holds the record for most World Series home runs at 18. That could be inaccurate. I'm not sure. I did not look that up. But as far as I know, he still leads the world in, in World Series home runs. 
He was also hampered by a ton of injuries, plagued by injuries his entire career pretty much once he got into the 60s. God only knows how great this guy would have been. He drank a lot of alcohol. There's, there's plenty of you know, uh, talk about his off-the-field antics and uh, just the amount of pain Mickey Mantle played in. Widely considered the greatest Yankee of all time and many, 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 many people's favorite Yankee of all time. Uh, Mickey Mantle, just absolutely a ridiculous player how good he was. Uh, many people, like I said, consider him the greatest Yankee of all time. And he is probably the most popular, maybe outside of Jeter. Maybe not. I think those are the two most popular Yankees ever. Mickey Mantle and uh, Derek Jeter. I always wished I could have saw Mickey Mantle play. Because Mickey Mantle could hit the ball over the moon. I mean, Mickey Mantle holds a record uh, with a long-distance home run of 585 feet. And remember, when these guys are playing at Yankee Stadium, it wasn't three, you know, it wasn't 370 to the gaps. It was 461 to dead center, 457 to the power alleys. These guys are hitting the ball 450, 460 feet to get out of the park back in the day. So, just crazy. Phenomenal power, phenomenal speed. Uh, I mean, he tore his ankle up or he tore his knee up in 1951 in the World Series, uh, getting it in one of the drainage, uh, you know, sections of the outfield. Um, kind of hampered him his whole career. Mickey Mantle could have been the greatest player in the history of baseball had he not had all those injuries. That's how good Mickey Mantle was. Finally, I don't think there's any uh, doubt. Number one is Babe Ruth. As a Yankee, not his career numbers, as a Yankee, because we all know he came from the Red Sox, he hit 349 with 659 homers and drove in 1,978 RBIs. He was a 10-time home run leader. He won the MVP in 1923. How he didn't win more MVPs is beyond me. A four-time RBI leader, a 13-time 300 hitter, including 1923 when he won his MVP. He hit 393. He was a seven-time World Series champion. He was in, in the, the inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1936, which was the inaugural class. I, I forgot to mention Mickey Mantle was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1974. My bad. Um, so Babe Ruth, inaugural class, Hall of Famer, 1936. And again, widely considered the greatest player in the history of baseball because not only was Babe Ruth a phenomenal hitter, he was also uh, a phenomenal pitcher with the Boston Red Sox. I believe his career record was 94 and 46. Uh, he was just great on every level. Uh, this was during the dead ball era when people were not hitting home runs. 1927, Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs, which was more than the entire Pittsburgh Pirates team. That is how dominant... Babe Ruth was. People talk about Barry Bonds being incredible, hitting 73 homers. But what Bonds would have had to do in the late in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s was hit you know 150 homers down homer a team. Then that's how good Babe Ruth was. That he ho out homered entire teams. Babe Ruth, the greatest Yankee in the history of their franchise. So that is uh, what I have for my top 10. I would love to hear what your guys' opinion is. Leave it in the comments section. You know, Let me know what your top 10 is. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I'm sure a lot of people will have Jeter higher. I had him at number 7. I figured that was the one controversial aspect of this list. But again, let me know what you think, guys. And I, I hope you enjoyed this. And um, let's go Yankees. I'm out. Peace!